What's going on, guys? Will again with Gutter Fighting Secrets, still here in uh, Saigon, or Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. And um, like I said, I'm here for Jeff Chan's uh, MMA Shredded Fight Camp, and it's an interesting experience. And one of the things that really has been the most interesting for me is um, talking with all of these fighters from all over the world. We got guys from Europe. We got guys from the Mideast. We got guys from Asia. We got guys from obviously America and Britain. Like there's literally fighters flew in from all over the world to attend this thing. And it's been super cool. I've been like off and on going to it. I'm like got a cold right now. I got an injured hip. Like I got another injury. I got tennis elbow. I'm all like, I've been training so hard. Like anyway, it doesn't, this isn't about me. This is about the topic at hand, which is, um, we were talking over dinner the other night, and we were discussing like the most fiercely debated topic within the combatives world, and it also gets brought up in MMA as well. Does being good at MMA or Muay Thai or boxing or whatever, sports fighting, make you good in the streets? Is it good enough to be called combatives, right? We know that the Army combatives program is now pretty MMA-centric. So is, you know, Sock P, right? Well sort of kind of with weapons, right? A lot of these military combatives programs, even look at uh, McMath, the Marine Corps martial arts program. A lot of these programs have taken a lot of what MMA does and what MMA trains in and put it into their combative systems. Well, there's a reason for that. <laughs> there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one is money, but number two is uh, it works, okay? It just works, but it was really interesting to hear what these fighters had to say. Here are MMA fighters from all over the world, and uh, there was maybe 12 of us at dinner talking about this subject, and you're going to be surprised. It was actually kind of an evenly divided camp whether MMA makes you good at combatives in the battlefield or the street. It was fairly evenly split. Some guys said, yeah, absolutely it does. If you're a good sports fighter, you're definitely going to fuck shit up on the street. I don't disagree with it at all. Like, if you're... Stepping into the cage with another highly trained individual and you're able to dominate and beat him, you're going to have no problem on the street or very little problem. But other guys brought it up. Well, like there's weapons on the street. There's other things going on as well. There's psychology that plays into it as well. You know, this and that, right? There's no rules on the street. Like, so it was, like I said, it's a hotly debated topic. And I know not all of you guys out there agree with me. Usually it's the guys who don't do MMA that disagree with me that, you know, being good at this makes you good at this. But, you know what, I respect everybody's opinion. Um, I always respect your opinion more if you have <laughs> experience to back it up. But it is an interesting topic. And what I want to do is open it up down in the comments below and get your opinion on it. I promise I won't, like, make any smart-ass comments. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, like, keep this respectful here. I have my opinion. Um, I, and I want to know yours, all right? I, I want to know yours because, like I said, it's, it, they're bo both sides of the argument have very valid opinions. Now, before we open that up, I'll give you my personal opinion. Yes, absolutely. Like I said, you're able to beat and dominate another highly trained individual in the ring. You're able to do it on the street. But there are certain things that we need to be aware of on the street or in the battlefield that like, don't really apply to the cage. For example, keeping somebody at distance on the, on the street might not be as a smart of an idea uh, because they can pull out a weapon. And if they do, you definitely don't want to be all the way out here. You want to be closer so you can attack them. Um, other things come in like, you know, looking out for multiple attackers, you know, shots to the groin, and ear slaps and eye gouges and stuff. But like, <laughs> honestly, it's so comical to me that people say like, well, you don't know these techniques. From, you know, if you're an MMA guy, you don't know how to do, like, dirty fighting techniques. Are you kidding me? Like, we, does it take a fucking PhD to poke someone in the eye or, like, knead them in the nuts? Dude, we get kneed in the nuts all the time accidentally. So, like, what the fuck makes you think that clenching someone up and kneeing them in the nuts in the street is, like, that big of a, like, a transition? It's just not. It's just not. So, um, that's my opinion. Yes, you got to be aware of, like, potential multiple attackers, but all it takes is, like, listening to literally, like, one lecture. Or literally like one video where I'm like, dude, just look out. Like if you're fighting someone in the street, like check your six. That's literally all it takes for an MMA fighter to transition over to that like combatives mentality. Transitioning to weapons, 
you know, yeah, okay, like that will take some training. That will take a little bit of muscle memory for a MMA fighter to do. But once he's able to like make that shift, once he once he's taken a handful of training courses or whatever, and you know, like transitioning over and grabbing a knife out of his plate carrier or whatever that looks like in your world, um, he'll be better at doing it than somebody who doesn't do MMA. It's just simple. And then especially when it comes to grappling or whatever, like a lot of the times if you're going to be transitioning to your knife, you're already going to be in a grapple. So like <laughs> I'd, rather, I'd rather have have to go to the ground knowing shitloads of jujitsu and wrestling than like knowing none and then falling back on my, like it's just, it's comical to me that anybody could debate this. Um, so yes, but like to sum it up for you, my personal humble opinion, you're good at MMA, you're going to be really good on the streets or, you know, in a combat situation if you go through just a little bit of training rather than if you've gone through like combatives training, but you don't have any MMA experience, it's going to take you a lot longer to level up and fight somebody who's a skilled fighter. And I'll leave it to you like that. All right, guys. So let me know your opinion down below. You know, if you think that I'm missing any pieces of the puzzle or whatever, let me know. All right. I'm game to hear it and I'm game to discuss it. Until next time, please remember that you are your first and last line of defense. And I'll see you in the next video, Mother Flowers. Subscribe. Subscribe.